Now, with thousands of freshers heading to university this week, Martin's here with the lowdown on the best way to finance those all-important years. Let's go straight into it. Um, how much should parents give their children to go to university? Well, I'm going to focus on England, by the way, in English students in England. It's actually more generous elsewhere in the United Kingdom, so let's do the English situation. Now, the, the obvious thing is tuition fees, which are generally £9,000 a year. They're paid for you by the student loans company and you don't have to repay them until after you leave, then only if you earn enough. So let's not worry about that. The real thing, and it's never talked about, but the issue that most students and parents have when they go off to university is actually that loans aren't big enough, not that they're too big, and it's the living loan, the maintenance loan, that is the problem. And that's getting worse this year. I've just done research on that. Now, look, what we're talking about is if you're between the age of 18 and 25 when you go to university, you're old enough to marry, you're old enough to join the army, you're old enough to vote, but the amount of living loan you get still depends on your parental income not your own income. So we might be independent adults, but we're not in the student finance system. And the amount of means testing, so some of the, the amount of loan you get is means tested based on parental income. Now, last year, that was 35%, so just over a third you got depend on, depended on parental income. This year, it's gone up to a maximum of 54%, so over half the amount is dependent on parental income. And what that means is if your family earn less than £25,000, you get the full amount. Mm -hmm. Uh, and after that, it starts to decrease until £60,000 when you get half the loan. Now, the thing that makes me angry about this, parents aren't told. They're just given a loan amount and students aren't told. Nowhere in the student loans company system does it tell you what you're expected to pay. Now, I wrote this morning an open letter to the university's minister, Joe Johnson, asking him to change this. What I'd like to see is a form on your entitlement form. It says, your loan for living is X. Um, this is less than the full loan. Parents, we are expecting you to pay at least X to make it up to the full loan because it causes friction and amongst that's families. That as a parent, you need to plan for years in advance to start putting this money away that your child's going to need. Well, some people think it's a loose issue. You have arguments between students and parents. We have parents who refuse to pay, mm -hmm. their give their students money. Students can't afford to go to university. And what we're doing is we're disenfranchising them from going to cash because they've got going to uni because they've got no way to force their parents to pay up. It's increased the amount that the amount that parents are having to pay is up by a maximum 27% this year. Oh, it's gosh. been a hidden rise. And even with the parental contribution, to be honest, living loans for many people, you watch, tell us on Twitter, because you're going to be swamped by this, the amount they get simply is a real struggle these days to even meet the basics. Mm. And so the cost of living rather than the tuition fees is the real issue we should focus on. All the politicians get it wrong. Actually, the, the tuition fees isn't an issue. It's after university and only if you pay enough. It's, can I actually afford to live there? Yes, students get jobs these days. When I went to uni, that was frowned on. Now it's encouraged, and rightly so, and employers like it. But it is a struggle to make ends meet for some students out there because the loans aren't big enough. All right, well, let's talk about the, the loans and how you yep. actually repay them. OK, as I say, you only repay once you leave university and only if you earn enough. So the way it works is you repay 9% of everything you earn above £21,000. So earn less than that, you repay nothing. The more you earn the more you repay. It's effectively a financially a no-win, no-fee university mm -hmm. education. It's wiped after 30 years, whether you've paid it all or you've not paid anything. If you've paid it all, it stops, but if you've not paid anything, it's still wiped after 30 years. Now, the maths on this is really complicated, but on my numbers, the vast majority of people who go to university will pay for the full 30 years. So, actually, the amount you borrow is irrelevant because you're going to pay for the full 30 years and, you're only, and what you pay doesn't matter. What you borrowed is irrelevant because you're repaying 9% of everything above £21,000, whether you borrowed 30000 or 50000 It's only whether you'll finish it earlier. So focus on the repayments. Uh, you repay like income tax, works just like a tax. It's far more like a tax than the loan, in truth. You repay it through the payroll and interest is added at above the rate of inflation for higher earners, but again... Many students, once they graduate, won't repay that because they'll just be repaying for 30 years and they won't repay enough to pay the interest. So for some it's interest-free, for some there's a lot of interest, and high earners pay more interest, but then they might repay it more quickly, that means it all falls back. It, God, that is complicated. It is. It, I'll tell you the best way to look at this. People say to me, £50,000 in debt, I should I be worried about it? For the huge majority, all but serious, I mean big earners, city lawyers, city bankers, apart from them, for most people, forget looking at your loan statement. It's irrelevant. This is a tax. 
You pay 9% more tax above £21,000 than everybody else. That's how it works. So if you earn £30,000, you're a bit above 21, you're paying 29%. Someone who didn't go to university right. pays 20%. Stop thinking of the loan number. Don't think it of that. Simply accept, That's if I go to university, it. I'll pay 9% more tax than someone who didn't go. And ask yourself, is that worth it? Hopefully, university ask yourself, education... Is that fair? Well... Otherwise, the people who don't go to university have to contribute to the cost of your education and you're, on average, going to earn more. So it's a complex yeah, argument. Yeah, OK.